Pastor Gina Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters, friends, and to my enemies. We bear witness there is only one true living God. He have no rivals. He have no partners, and God have no equals. He is God alone made the earth by his power, established the world by his wisdom, and stretched off the heavens by his understanding. We're glad to be here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We're glad to all of our brothers and sisters that are here and them that are still coming in. To all of our ministers and guests, to the millions of television viewers that are watching around the world, we thank God for the way of holiness. We're glad for all of you that are here that have been hearing the message. The message of holiness is very piercing. It'll wake you up out of your years of sleep. Amen. Normally when I travel somewhere here in America, I come a day ahead to try to catch some rest, but I didn't do that this time. I was so fatigued and so exhausted yesterday, I stayed home, and i only been here probably about two hours. We arrived straight from Philadelphia, went to our hotel, showered up, got cleaned up. All I had to eat all day was a bag of popcorn. <laughs> Amen, but I'm going to pop some good word on you. God be our helper tonight. <laughs> Amen. So if I look tired, it's because I am. My traveling schedule is... Well, you see over the air, we're always somewhere in the country trying to save hard-haired men and women from an everlasting hell that God will bring upon creation. As we can bear witness, the world is in turmoil. It won't get no better. Don't look to no Democrat and don't look to no Republican. Our help can only come from the Lord. Thank God that make heaven and earth. So, our interest is the same interest that the Apostle Paul had. He declared that my prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. This is why we are traveling like we do. We don't go to little pop places here and there and visit one area overseas. We travel the world and we're not getting paid to do it. Think of it, not getting paid to tell you what's right. Now if I were to tell you what's wrong, I can make millions. Your mega preachers that's out here now, they have their fake healing meetings, fake mega churches. They turn church into a whole dance hall. But when you tell the people exactly what God say from the scriptures, ain't nobody want to give you no money. Nobody want to buy you no plane either. <laughs> My interest is your soul. And that should be your interest. Saving your soul. The Lord says, all souls are mine. Everybody in here belong to God. Even the sinner belonged to God when he or she 
is too hard head and ignorant to even realize it, they so belong to God. One of the greatest days of your life is when you come into the knowledge of who God is. Many religions teach that you have to come into the knowledge of yourself first and then you come into the knowledge of God second. That's backward. You come into the knowledge of your creator first and then he will show you all the reality of self because you ain't never been a man or a woman until you know God. Are you listening? So please remember the announcements. The Holy Convocation is coming up. We'll be in Charlotte, North Carolina this year. Everybody, I'm looking for all of Oklahoma, Texas, New York, and Pittsburgh, and Canada, America, South America, Europe, the Caribbean, everywhere that we may assemble and let the world know there's some real God-fearing people still in the earth who don't believe in playing church. We don't believe in playing church at all. Not at all. You know, I moment I arrived, we stopped in Chicago and when we had to connect here, the moment I got off the plane, good, to go to my connecting flight, they come to your old wicked city. <laughs> we was bomb rushed by the militaries and workers for America Airlines and so many people. You know, they watch the broadcast. They love it. When I finally arrived here, I don't think I took three steps coming off the plane before Oklahoma workers came. You pass the genders? I say yes. Man, we don't miss your program. Some confess, we didn't obey it yet, but we don't miss it. The gospel is for everybody. And Oklahoma, the reason why we're here, not only to set up a temple here, but we also hear. <laughs> Amen. You know, because the way things are now, the way things are now, we have to open up a temple every city we go in. There's some hungry people out here. And there are many people that is sick and tired of religion. The center don't respect church, and you know what? I don't blame them. This garbage, this junk, this trash that's hiding behind a cross and masquerading their hypocrisy under the name of Jesus, that junk is not church. They mad at me, you know. Amen, because I won't play house with them. You know, when you were a child, you played patty cake. And you bought your children uh, artificial kitchen sets and make fake gingerbread and all that stuff. And the preachers are mad with me because I won't play patty cake, patty cake, go to hell. I won't play church. The Lord made it plain that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. That have been a big religious change all over the world in churches. Don't you see it? You watch BET, practically every religious program is a circus. Trinity Broadcast Network, Circus. I remember when my media director, Dan the Man, he called Trinity Broadcasting Network about some <laughs> television time. <laughs> they said, well, uh, what's the name of the church? 
He said, first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, who's the, they said, who's the pastor? He said, Pastor Gino Jenner. That's just so we can't help you. <laughs> we can't help you. They said, he's too militant. Called Star Television. Uh, we would like to know you got any time slots. What's your program? Truth of God. Who's the pastor? Pastor Gino Jenner. Every slot is filled. <laughs> BET, call them. They didn't even ask the church name. Who's the pastor? Pastor Jennings, we have no openings. <laughs> because we won't play church. We're not over the television or webcast begging you for money with all these fake healing meetings. We know God is a healer. Don't we? If God don't get you out of that wheelchair, you're going to roll right back home. I can pray for you, but I'm not a healer. My job is to ask God to heal. Then it's up to him. He's the boss to get you out that wheelchair or leave you there or let you stay there for a period of time. All right, let's get open the book of pain here. Let's get your Bibles open. Hallelujah. I want to show you the purpose of the Bible, of the scriptures. The word of God says, whatsoever things are written aforetime, are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All of our hope is in the Lord's word. Not I guess, I suppose, nothing made up. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He only started one church. And as you hear me often say, the church is not the building. The church of them that have repented of their sins and was baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is God himself. Filled with that spirit, speaking in other tongue as the spirit of God give utterance like they did on the day of Pentecost. So where do all these religions come from? I had a man tuned in. He said, everywhere you go, you preach the same thing. I'm sick of it. I said, all right. <laughs> well, there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. Everywhere I go, I see the same crime. So if I see the same crime, I got to show you what penalty you will suffer for that crime. Amen. We want people to come out of sin. Amen. Amen. What good is living in this life? No God. No fear, but yet have all your money, have all your cars, have all your houses, got all your health, and have all your strength, but you don't know who God is? You're a fool. Thank God you're living a life in vain. Hear this, hear this. The purpose of God's word is the education, to introduce to you the ways of God that you know may know right from wrong to correct you when you're wrong, to reaffirm when you're right, to build you up when you're torn down, to mend whatever is in your life that's broken and give you the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of the Most High. There is no greater understanding than his. I don't care how many men go to cemetery school. <laughs> Bible college don't make preachers. Did you hear what I'm telling you? I, I want this to be good in case I got any undercover Oklahoma preachers here. I don't bit more care nothing about your degrees your PhD, your DD, preaching the word of God is the divine act of God and you can't get that from no school. God made the apostles. 
God made the prophets. God revealed himself to his servants. That's why you hear the prophets saying, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the preacher, if he sent of God, never hear be good. Should he have to write out a sermon? Never should he have to have an iPad and put a topic to a sermon. Never. That's as he sent by heaven. Should he have to worry about how many theological degrees and all of that th theory. We, we don't preach theory. We don't preach philosophy. You better start off with Colossians. Colossians. I want to crush ideology. <laughs> That's right. Because there's a lot of ideology that we mistake for religion. Right. We have been taught it. We have been raised by it. We have went to churches and shout, fall out behind chairs, tore up your stockings, tore up your pants, mess the shine on your shoes, jumping and hollering over something that ain't never been in the Bible. Think of it, think of it. How did all these religions come out of one book? Do you think God is a fool? Thank God when the God of heaven, the great Jehovah, brought Israel out of Egypt, he didn't have five and ten promised lands. <laughs> they had to journey to one place, the land of Canaan. And God didn't change that route even after Moses died. What did the Lord do? Come on, Joshua. Joshua continued on the same journey that Moses was on. I'm saying that to say this. From the time that Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He didn't give the apostles the authority to start some other beliefs, some other religions, some other faiths, and to teach any other teaching that was different from what they got from him. Am I right, I said? Nowhere in the Bible did Jesus declare himself to be the second person of the Godhead. And if he didn't say it, why do you? Amen. Nowhere in the Bible did it say the Holy Ghost is the third person of the Godhead. If the Bible never said it, why do you? You see, we're calling the world back to Bible. Amen. Uh, we got to profess a good profession. I don't believe in no Baptist church. You want to know why? I can't find that junk in the Bible. So why do you claim you're a Baptist? I don't believe in a Presbyterian church. Why? Why don't I believe it? I can't find you in the Bible. I don't believe in Catholicism, some old European Catholic church that come out of hell and lied on Mary and said Mary was the mother of God. God don't have no mother. God have no beginning of days and no end of life. I don't believe in the Pope. Why don't I believe it? It's not in the Bible. The Bible ain't never said Peter was no first pope. The Bible said Peter was an apostle, an apostle. not a pope. That's right. So everywhere I travel, here be good Oklahoma, this old wicked tornado banging city. Hey Amen. You you gonna have a different tornado in here tonight? <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. You know, you know, in the book of Nahum, it says God have his way in the whirlwind. You know, they have tornado shelters here where you can hide from the wind and survive. Here's a tornado coming, you won't be able to survive. 
Glory to God, we're going to come along and tear down your religion. We're going to tear down your preacher. We're going to tear down your church. We're going to tear down everything you believe that's not like God. There's not a shelter in the state of Oklahoma that you can hide in. We're going to start off with Bible. We're going to get Bible in the middle. And when we end up, we're going to end up with Bible. And you bear in mind, I don't care who your pastor is, what your religious background is, Pentecostal, non-denominational, apostolic, Methodist, Lutheran, Scientology. You can be whatever you want. God told everybody to be one thing. one thing. And that thing, obviously you've been listening, Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Amen. What did God tell the world to be, Oklahoma? He told them to be what? That sounds so good. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord wants the world to be holy. And the devil done introduce a smorgasbord of religion. You know, I love to go to restaurants that got open buffet. I can choose what I want. <laughs> Glory to God, the Bible ain't set up that way. It's not set up that way. You go scoop out some Baptist and scoop out some Methodist and scoop out some Presbyterian and scoop out, amen, some Muslim and scoop out some Mormon. Not here. Oh, no. Thank God when you dip in this book, you got to get a spoonful of holiness and fill your plate with holiness. And the last thing you eat got to be holy. Yeah. All right, Williams, let's go to work. Open your Bibles and follow me tonight. In the book of Colossians chapter 2, and we're at verse 8. Listen at this. We're going to start in Colossians 2, 8. All Be, right. Beware. Now, right, right off the bat, the Apostle Paul start off with a warning. Beware. Beware. Look out. Be alert. And the reason why he wants you to beware, because many people are not aware. For years we have gone to church and was very sincere, dedicated, faithful, working on committees all over the place. Women making pound cakes, <laughs> frying chicken, and making potato salad to raise money for the devil to build a false church. <laughs> Brothers sponsoring car washes to wash the pimp preacher and the pimp deacon cars. Amen. So he can pick your wife up and drive her not to church. <laughs> Am I right, I said? Here's a warning here. Beware. Look out. Beware lest any man. Lest any man. Spoil you. Spoil you. Through philosophy. Through philosophy and vain deceit, vain deceit after the tradition of men is after men's tradition after the rudiments of the world after the rudiments of the world and, and not, not after Christ after Christ not and after. this is what have contam contaminated the churches everywhere in the world theology philosophy the sayings of men let me make this example. You know, when the police pull you over, sometimes some of them violate your rights, but if you don't know law, you don't know how to put them in check. Well, the preachers violate your Bible rights. And if you don't know the scripture, you don't know how to put him in his place. One thing that the preachers don't want from the followers, they don't want you to know the Bible. Because as long as they can keep you blind, deaf, dumb, then they can rob you blind every week. Because when your knowledge 
when you start getting knowledge and understanding and start asking questions. And that's the one thing about you just go to chirp and church and jump and shout. Some of you jump too much. Ask that hypocrite who is your Baptist pastor. Show you in the Bible where the religion of Baptist came from. Yeah, tell you, well, it really doesn't matter. You have your religion and I have mine. Nobody is to have their own religion. No. The Lord have never sent no prophet or no apostle and thought so much of no prophet and thought so much of no apostle that he gave them the authority to start a religion. Many people say, well, Jesus came here and start Christianity. Show me that scripture. Show me that scripture. In fact, show me in the Bible a religion in your Bible that's called Christianity. Christian is in the Bible. The Bible said there was first called Christians at Antioch. A Christian is a person who strives to live and conduct themselves like Christ. That's a person. Christianity is a religion that have never, never, never been in the scriptures. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Beware. Look out. Lest any man spoil you. So many of you that are here been spoiled like a child uh, when their parents spoiled them, keep giving them candy and sugar and all that stuff. And amen. But when the child's time for the child to really eat some collard greens, some turnip greens, and you got a lot of farmland out here, I'm pretty sure y'all grow some good corn and good greens and good candy yams and thank God in some good beans. Oh Lord, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> Well, when that child gets some good home cooking, a lot of time the child pout and don't want it because it has been spoiled for years by eating candy. This is the condition of the so-called people in churches. You have been spoiled by the Benny Hens. You have been spoiled by the TD Snakes. You have been spoiled by the Creflo O'Pennies. You have been spoiled by the smiling joker Joel Alstein. These men, preachers, try to imitate them. That's right. Preaching prosperity and money. Kenneth Copeland goes as far as telling you. It's a sin to be poor. Mm. And you got ignorant religious people saying amen to this junk. To that. Knowledge is power. Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. The worst form of ignorance, the worst form of bondage is ignorance. Jesus taught us the poor you have with you always. You can be poor naturally, but there's a worse form of poverty. Right. It's when you're poor spiritually. Right. When you're poor spiritually, you're constantly going to church or the mosque or the synagogue and you're still not eating what the book says. That's right. So therefore my soul suffer from spiritual malnutrition. Some children in these poverty-stricken countries have still big guts, but nothing in them. Many people in the churches are jumping like they got some spirit, but don't have no truth in them. So all you have is a sound of brass and a tinkling of a cymbal. Stop jumping. Stop shouting. Learn first, which give you something to jump about and give you something to shout about. What good is me jumping and shouting and I know, I don't even know who God is. I have no clue. 
who he is. Get I wisdom. Think, I think he's an image in my Bible or an image on a cross around my neck or an image uh, in my house on a cross. Uh, no. When you come into the knowledge of who the Lord is, then you will know he created you for his glory, for his purpose, that his agenda, his total infallible perfect agenda may be made manifest in every man and woman life regardless of the color of your skin, your nationality, your creed, your background. God only have one way. One way. Just like the land of Canaan was the one place for all Israel, the word of God is the one place for the entire world to follow. That's right. All right, Williams, what did he say? Beware lest any man spoil you. Beware, Oklahoma. Beware. Let's do an examination tonight. Everybody all right? Yeah. I love everywhere I go to give you an examination. See where you're spoiled by the same teachings as so many millions of people. How many of you were spoiled and being taught that there's a trinity? Raise your hand. You see that? How many of you was taught that Jesus is the second person of the Godhead? Raise your hand. How many was taught that the Holy Ghost is the third person in the Godhead? Raise your hand. Well, you're not by yourself. Williams was taught it to. That's right. How many was sprinkled one time, sprinkled as a child, or sprinkled family members sprinkled in some old fake Catholic church? How many of you, one time in your life, saw an image on a cross that you really thought was Jesus and pet your head and both sides of your chest and your stomach? Oh, I got a whole lot of those. Amen. Glory to God. So there's many forms of philosophy. philosophy. Five minor prophets and five major. Paul was crucified, he died at Nero's chopping block and Peter was crucified, hair down and feet up and five minor prophets and five major. Jesus' birthday is Christmas. And mm. Jesus arose on Easter. <laughs> All these lies that come out of hell. And I'm pretty sure many of you here now, you had your Christmas tree last year, and undoubtedly some of you are making plans for this year. Somebody say, well, Pastor Jennings, it's still the summertime. It's the wrong time to preach that. Oh, not for me. Not, not, not for you. No, it's not the wrong time. The Bible says be instant, in, in season and out of season. Out of season. Bible said be instant in season and out of season. Out of season. So I got to bring you uh, the, the thing that the Bible says before the season even get here. You tell that lie. Jesus is the reason for the season. No, the devil is the reason for your Christmas season. That's right. That's right. Regardless of how great and how positive truth is, for many of us to accept what is true, we have to humble ourselves, and in some cases, it's hard to make that change. Oh, yes. If I've been taught for years that five and five is nine, and then somebody comes later on and say, look, you've been misinformed, five and five is 10, regardless of how true that is, I first have to humble myself. Oh, yes. And it may take some time for me to accept that truth, but I have to make a change before I accept the truth about that matter. That's, right. That's the way it is everywhere in the world. People are misinformed, taught wrong, and are very sincere. And the devil in these preachers do not care how sincere you are as long as he makes you blind and a religious victim. And that's why these men go from town to town with mega meetings. That's right. That's why they've been trying to get us off the air for years and they're still trying. <laughs> Amen. I was in Memphis, Tennessee a few weeks ago where we baptized, I believe, about 200 and I think 56 souls in the name of Jesus Christ in two days. And we called out the church of God in Christ. <laughs> 
We call out the church of God in Christ because how can you be in Christ and don't believe in the name of the Lord Jesus in baptism? Women preachers wall to wall like carpet. That's right. Believe you can have all the wives you want and all the husbands you want. This is church people. This is church. And many people that claim they serve in the Lord with all these wives and all these husbands and following preachers with multiple wives and even preachers got multiple husbands. They're going both ways now. That's right. They're going both ways now. You can go on social media, you'll see the gay pastors on there with the first man. That's right. Not the first lady, but the first man. That's right. And these dumb, ignorant, hell deserving, hypocrite, and good for nothing, spineless men that go to these low down, dirty churches. That's why the sinner don't respect this junk that's called church. Even the sinner know that junk don't represent Christ. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Beware. Beware. Lest any man spoil you. You know I'm not out to spoil you. Oh, no. Uh, no. I, we don't have no sugar <laughs> at all. Because Jesus said salt, salt is, good. is good. That's it. Yeah, man, I'm not giving no sugar to your mama, your father, your wife, your husband, not even your baby. <laughs> That's right. Glory to God, I'm coming to give all, everybody the same thing. You know, when Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish and fed the thousands of people, I'm pretty sure children was there. Yeah. And I don't read where he took the bones out the fish. No. He gave them all the same thing. Same thing. Amen. I'm not, when you stick with the word, no bones in there. No. The Bible said meat for the belly and belly for the meats. Beware. Beware. Let's Let's any man, man spoil you. Spoil you. Through philosophy. Through philosophy and, and vain deceit. deceit. After the tradition of after men. After the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world. After the things of the world. And not after Christ. All right, let's go to work now. Now in the book All of 2 Timothy. All scriptures. I want you to follow this. That's right. Second Timothy chapter comes three. to mind in the third chapter. And we'll start reading at verse 15. And begin at the 15th verse. I want to show you the purpose of the Bible, mm -hmm. the purpose of the scriptures. It's not just something to read and believe, but the Bible come along to correct us. That's right. It reproves us. It'll show how thick your skin is. That's right. Whether you can really take it or whether you will run away from it. That's right. Get this now, Second follow Timothy, me in your Bible. Second Timothy chapter three, we'll start reading in verse 15. Yes. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Now, from a child, the apostle Paul, born in Tarsus, in the city of Cilicia, is talking to brother Timothy. And said, from a child you knew the scriptures, Thou hast known the holy the scriptures. The holy scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Yes, you hear that? <laughs> That's right. The scriptures are able to make everybody wise. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. Not theology. That's right. Not philosophy. No. Not theory. No. Not bringing a so-called Christian comedian in the church to entertain the people. That's right. Not that. No. Mm -mm. No. It's the word of the Lord that's given to make thee wise. Which are able to make thee wise unto, unto salvation. Unto salvation. Through you know, faith. The wisdom of God will give you salvation. Salvation means to be delivered from. That's right. Thank you. And the wisdom of heaven will deliver you from your ignorance. That's right. From bad teaching, yes. from wrong information, oh, yeah. and pull you out of every unscriptural religious setting. That's right. It'll pull you out of it. Hear this. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Yes. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Yes. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now I got to believe the scriptures. That's right. Even though it's able to make me wise. I can't get wisdom if I don't believe it. That's right. The word of God said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I believe what's written. Oh, yes. And for me to believe or obey what's written, I can't obey what I don't understand. That's right. 
That's why you need a God sent preacher. That's right. Bible says, how can you hear? Without a preacher. Without a preacher. Yeah. How can he preach? Except he be sent. Except he be sent. How do I recognize that God sent a preacher? All kids preaching is locked down in the scriptures. All of it. He don't make one scripture contradict the other. When you think the scriptures are contradicting itself, God will send a preacher right between those scriptures that will unravel them and take them apart and make them harmonize. That's right. And you will see that there's no errors, no blunders, no mistakes that ever fell out of the lips of Almighty God. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. From a child you knew the Scriptures. Which are able to make thee wise unto make salvation. Make you wise unto salvation. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. All Scripture. <laughs> Glory to God. All the Scriptures. Is given by All of it. All Scripture. It how is it given, son? It's given by inspiration of God. Well, it's given how? By inspiration of God. Now, hear me good, Oklahoma. God inspired men to write what's in the book. That's right. That's right. And that same spirit, hear me good, that inspired men to write what's in the book. That's right. That same spirit that they have must get in man today to explain and interpret what's written in that book. We having the same spirit. You see, the reason why men contradict the Bible so much because the spirit that's in them and the spirit that moved on men to write the book is not the same spirit. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Here's uh, God moved on uh, the prophet Moses to write in Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. Yeah. So anytime some crackpot preacher come along and say, oh, there's a trinity. God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's three separate and distinct persons in the Godhead. He don't have the same spirit of that Moses had. No. The spirit of the devil is a spirit of contradiction. That's right. Do you hear what I'm telling you, Oklahoma? I don't care how big that man robe is, how many stripes he got on his arm, how many degrees we have behind his name, how many universities he went to. It doesn't matter how large his following is. When his teaching contradict the brothering of old. That's right. He's not guided by the same spirit that's in them. That's right. Word of God say we are baptized by one spirit into one body. That's right. The prophets and the apostles had the same spirit. Same spirit. That's why, blessed be the name of God in the book of Revelation, John was immediately in his spirit in the fourth chapter of Revelation and he saw a throne. That's right. And one sat on the throne. In Revelation chapter 4, we'll start at verse 1. Says what? After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. After this I looked, a door was opened in heaven. You see the Bible talking uh, uh, and a lot of uh, metaphoric statements. That's right. And to better understand what I'm saying, in, in the re religion of, or the study of Egyptology, the Egyptians didn't have the alphabet like we got now. They have pictures that tells their history. And the pictures are called hieroglyphics, symbols. Right. The Bible is full of symbols. And there's many things in here, if you take literal, you'll get in trouble. Oh, yes. A good example, the scripture where Jesus said, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Well, he don't mean you go around using a knife or a saw dislocating your hand. That's right. He says again, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. <laughs> he don't mean for you to go around and grab your eyes to get rid of it. That's right. But he's talking about things that's closely associated with your body. There are things closely associated in our life that if those things will cause us to be lost, get rid of that thing, lay aside that thing, because it's better to be saved without that thing 
than to have that thing and go to hell with it. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. So when uh, Apostle John, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee, was on the Isle of Patmos, and I don't read where no other apostle was out there with him. No. He was put in the spirit. That's right. And the Bible says what? After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. A door. Now you would think there was a big door open up. Now you got to do some Bible search here. What, what is the purpose of a door? A door. Is to open up that you may see what's on the other side. That's right. Who is the door? Mm. Jesus said, I am the door. Then said Jesus unto them again. <laughs> again? Verily, verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you. I am the door. I am the door. Of the sheep. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am the door of the sheep. Now, when he saw a door open in heaven, that means Jesus revealed something to Brother John. Right. Why you think the book of Revelation is called Revelation? Revelation, Revelation means that which is revealed, That's right. that which is made known, that which is manifest by heaven. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Which God gave which unto him. God gave unto him. To show unto his servants to things. To show unto him several things. Which must shortly come to All right, go back to the fourth chapter of Revelation and read quick. After this I looked and behold a door was opened a in heaven. A door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet yes. talking with me. Which said, come up hither. Come up hither. And I will show thee things which I must be hereafter. I will show thee things that come hereafter. And immediately. Right away. I was in the spirit. That's what's missing in the churches Hallelujah. right now. That's it. John said what? Immediately. Right away. I was in the spirit. That's why the pulpits are dead. That's because right. there's no spirit up here. That's right. That's right. The Bible says the body without the spirit is dead. Immediately, I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. Wait a minute. Behold, what was set up there? A throne was set in heaven. No, one for the Father, and one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. A throne was set in heaven. One for God and one for Jesus. A throne was set in heaven. A throne. Yeah. Here's a man in the spirit. Look right in heaven. That's right. And told me what was in there. That's right. Here's these men got glasses that can't see around the corner. <laughs> and they trying to tell me what's up there. And when they done, what's up there is not in here. And immediately I was in the spirit. We're going to believe what's in here. That's it. Oh, it's that God, when you're, when you're put in the spirit, you can see things without the natural eye. That's right. Huh? Immediately I was in the spirit. Right away. I was in the spirit. Oh, it's that God, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne, a throne was set in heaven. Was set in heaven. And <laughs> here, here. How many did he see, Williams? And one. Three. One. Got the Father, got the Son, and got the Holy Ghost. One. Five. One. Two. One. One. Every, anybody here that got two more with the one? I'm going to kill your other two gods. That's right. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to murder them, That's and right. I'm going to smash them back to hell from where they come from. That's right. That's right. You Bible scholars and you bishops out there that lied and said there are three separate and distinct personalities in the Godhead, yeah. i tell you where that lie came from. It came out of Rome. That's it right. came out of Europe. It came from Constantine. That's right. But it never came from God out of hell. Amen. He's one. And immediately I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne. A throne. Was set in heaven. How many did he see? And one. One. Sat on the throne. That's all I see. That, that's it. That's all I see. I see one. That's all I see, Pastor. That one said, well, if there's one God who, was on, who fulfilled the earth, the one God do. That's right. He's higher than heaven and deeper than hell and broader than the sea and oh. longer than the earth. Amen. No measurement to him. No. He's eternal. He's everywhere. That's right. Fulfilling, hallelujah. hallelujah. Fulfilling heavens and earth alone. alone. He don't, he's a jealous God, and being he's a jealous God, he ain't sharing his Godhead with nobody. That's right. Am I right, Oklahoma? Hallelujah. The Bible said, I, the Lord thy God, 
is a jealous, jealous God. Jealous. Don't have no other God before me. That's right. No other God with me. That's right. No other God besides me. That's right. He's too jealous. Oh, yes. And you down there on your knees smacking your head and your chest and your stomach, you might as well cut that folly out. That's right. We only got one to pray to here. And immediately I was in the spirit. Thank God immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, and behold a throne, a throne, was, set throne was set in heaven. And one, and one sat on the throne. Sat on that throne. And he that sat. They that sat. He that sat. We that sat. He that sat. Us that sat. He that sat. Singular. Singular. He. Singular. He. Singular. And he that said. He that said was to look upon as a jasper and a starting stone. And there was a rainbow there round a about rain, the throne. Yeah, there was a rainbow round about the throne. And the, yeah, and the rainbow did not represent homosexuality. No. <laughs> not at all. No. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's what's going on here in Oklahoma. Hey Amen. This, this is not only flat land, this is wild land. This is where the homosexuals can roam free, like, like the buffalo like roam. The buffalo roam. <laughs> well, just like the Indians skin the hide of the buffalo, I'm a skin the hide with Bible. Bible. Well, every homosexual in the world. That's right. Amen. That's right. <laughs> right away they say, you see that? That man is mean. He's hateful. Where is your love? William is holding my love right here. That's right. That's my love right here. That, that's right. I said before and I say again, God ain't make no man to marry a man. God ain't make no woman to marry a woman. No. Every politician that endorses it is of the devil. Every preacher that endorses it is a false prophet. That's right. And every church member that endorses it is a hypocrite. That's and right. I don't care if you here in this building, you's a hypocrite, a Bible carrying hypocrite. Go ahead. Hear that? That's right. That's right. Are ah, you listening? Amen. There are no Christian homosexuals in the world. No. No, no. Not one. That's right. You can't be a homosexual and a Christian. No. Well, when you're Christian, you're supposed to be Christ-like. The Bible says, should a man leave father and mother and he cleave to his, to his wife, wife, not cleave to another man? No, no. God wasn't mixed up when he created Adam and Eve. No. He ain't made Adam and Steve. No. Amen. You blind, ignorant, so-called Christian parents that say your children got a right to choose what they are. Yes. It ain't no child can decide what they are. That's right. God making decisions. That's right. Oh, it takes God the moment that child is formed in the womb. That's right. God make that child a boy. God make that child a girl. Before I form thee in the belly. Don't you hear in the first chapter of the book of Jeremiah? And verse 5. Before I form I thee. I form thee. In the belly. In the belly. I knew thee. I knew thee. I knew thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you. I knew thee. Hallelujah. God, your mother, amen. She can take your name and take it off the birth certificate oh, yes. and put them or That's put right. they, but you're right. either male or, male female. or female. Man or woman. That's it. That's it. That's it. Every politician and every preacher Hallelujah. that say otherwise, including President Biden. That's right. That goes for you too. That's right. And Kamala Harris. That's right. That endorsed this homosexual trash. Oh yeah. And the whole democratic hypocrite. Amen. None of you. Go ahead. None of you <laughs> is a Christian. No. That endorsed same-sex marriages. That's right. Not one. That's right. Not one. Not one. That's right. 
Hear me good. Amen. I don't care if you're black as the street, white as snow, yellow as butter, or clear as water. Oh, yeah. Any of you preachers or any of you judges, Democrat or Republican or from the Supreme Court yeah. that endorse, endorse same-sex marriages, you're nothing but low-down liars. That's right. And you pull pit Cadillac driving scared bums. Go ahead. That is too weak because the devil took your spine. Go ahead. To stand up against it, you ought to go to hell, God knows. That's right. Are you listening? Before I formed thee in the belly. God said, before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. Before I made you. I knew thee. I already knew you before that, I made you. That's right. I already knew what you were. Before I And if he can tell Jeremiah he knew what he was, hmm. then I'm telling you right now, right tonight, now. God know what you are. That's right. Huh? That's right. I don't matter if you got homosexuals in your family. No. I got homosexuals in mine. Amen. The Bible don't change. No. If I got any parents here and you know you got a son named Sam and you want him to change his name to Samantha, you ain't no Christian. You's a hypocrite. That's a hypocrite. If I got any women here, thank God that's putting lipstick on your son, you're teaching your son blasphemy. Blasphemy. God said, let us make let man. Let us make man. That's it. You parents, stand up. That's right. And stop being scared and say, you accept the children the way they are. You no know, parent that fear God will accept wrong. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Glory yeah. to God. Oh, we're going to preach it. God knows. Oh, yes. Oklahoma, if you thought at any time I was any different in person than I was over the air, that devil made a fool out of you. That's right. Huh? That's right. The only difference is when you get upset watching me over the air, you can turn it off. Right now, I'm live, buddy. Ah. You can't turn me off now. That's right. Amen. That's right. All right, son, go back to the Revelation and finish up real fast. Back in Revelation chapter 4 and at verse 3. I want to show you that the prophets and the apostles had the same spirit, which differed from the spirit of these men today. Revelation on, chapter 4 and verse 3. All right. And he that sat was to look upon like a he jasper. He said, immediately I was in the spirit and one was on the throne. Mm -hmm. I saw one set on the throne and he that sat was to look upon as a jasper and a sodding stone. And there was a and rainbow, was a rainbow round, about, round the about the throne. In sight like unto an emblem. In sight like unto an emblem. And round about the and throne were four and twenty throne, seats. There was 24 seats. And upon the seats I saw four and 20 they elders were clothed in, in white raiment, raiment and, and they, they had, had on their heads, heads crowns of gold. Now 12 plus 12 was 24. That's it. You have 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus came and chose 12 men and made them 12 apostles. That's right. The 24 elders around the throne represent Old Testament and New Testament. They represent the 12 tribes of Israel and they represent the 12 men that Jesus made apostles. Right. And they had on their head crowns, crowns of gold, of which meant the prophets and the apostles was anointed by the self same spirit. Right. They was anointed by the self same spirit because the book says in the book of Peter that the prophets of old had the spirit of Christ and the spirit, and of, the Christ spirit of Christ is the testimony of Jesus. That's right. God have never moved on the apostles to contradict the prophets. No. So whoever your pastor is and I don't care who he is <laughs> I don't care if it's your daddy that's right or your son that's right or your uncle or your husband or your slap happy grandpappy that's right if what he preach contradict the apostles at all oh yes your pastor is a false prophet that's right do you hear me that's right hear me woman your husband is a false prophet Hear me, hear me good. Your grandpappy is a false prophet because he's supposed to have the same spirit, same spirit. that they had. That's right. The same spirit that moved on men to write the book got to get in men today to explain and interpret what's in the book. That's right. God will never get in no man today with no message, with no sermon, not even a prophecy that contradict that book. That's right. That's right. I don't care how anointed he may appear. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. You can't contradict what's written here. Oh, no. 24 elders was anointed. 
They were all was clothed in, in white, white, white raiment. And they all had on their head crowns, crowns of, of gold. gold. All the prophets and all the apostles was anointed by the self same spirit of God. That's right. All right, let's go back to where you were in Timothy here. Back in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and at verse 16. Read quick. All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's given by the inspiration of God. Now, God inspired men to give up the scriptures for a reason. That's right. Amen. You know, I do architect. And there are certain instruments that architects use. And when it comes time for building, the builder got to use it. Mm -hmm. And the plumb line is one plumb of them. The plumb line is one of them. When you get a plumb line, you know, back in the old time, they had the plumb line, you know, that string of chalk and you pop the string. Now they got a laser beam. Mm -hmm. But there's not a wall or a building that you see in the world where a plumb line is not used. That's right. Because the plumb line is the instrument of straightness. And that way there is no wobble in the wall or in the building. That's right. Now the plumb line got to be in the churches. In, you the, book of Amos, in the book of Amos. Chapter now. 7 and at verse 7. Glory to God, we're building something good here. Oh, yes. Come on, William. Amos chapter 7 and verse 7. Follow me and hear me. Thus he showed me. Thus he, not they. He. Thus he, God, is one. Showed me. Thus he showed me. And behold, the Lord. And the Lord. Stood upon a wall. Stood upon a wall. Made by a plumb line. He, it was made by a plumb line. With a plumb line in his hand. Wait a minute. He stood on the wall, which means the Lord had the oversight of the people. That's right. Huh? That's right. You see, the Lord is building his church and the church is the people. Mm -hmm. Them that repented of their sins and baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible called the people lively stones. Lively stones. So whenever one is ready to walk with the word of God and obey the same and repent of their sins and is baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God take that lively stone and put it in the church and put it in his building. That's right. Listen at this. And behold the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb Made line. by a plumb line. With a plumb line in his With hand. With a plumb line in his hand. That lets you know the Lord is responsible mm. for keeping everything straight. That's right. Because uh -huh, in his hand. That's right. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what Amos, seest thou? What do you see? And I said, a plumb line. A plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold. Behold. I will listen, set. Listen at this. Give chapter and verse. I want everybody, you that are watching and the many that are here, get this. Amos chapter 7. Now we're at verse 8. Amos. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? What do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Thank God, there I see a plumb line. Then said the Lord. Then said the Lord. Behold. Look. I, I will set a plumb line. I will set a plumb line. In the midst of my people in Israel. In the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. Now. A plumb line is used so a wall or a building can yeah. be straight. That's right. God is setting a plumb line in the midst of people. That's right. Because he wants his people straight. straight. The only thing that will straighten out the crooked is the straight path. That's right. Straight. That's right. And narrow. Is the way. Is the way. Straight. Straight. Straight and narrow. And narrow. Is the way. The Bible said is the way. St. Matthew chapter 7. We'll start at verse 13. You better give me Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. Enter ye in. Enter ye in. At the straight gate. Enter ye in at the, at the crooked gate. At the straight gate. Amen. Imagine Amen. going into a place of worship. Mm. And your whole worship is crooked. Crooked. You know that religious setting is backward. That's right. A lot. Well, you know when you are in there and don't know, you're going along with it. That's right. But all of a sudden, when you start having the understanding now, and that light start to hit your eyes. <laughs> That's right. You start looking at all religious gathering totally different. Oh, yeah. Right. You no longer go along to get along. You look at things different. Amen. And you're wondering, is I'm the only one that see this? That's right. Don't you? you asking your friends, do you see what I see? That's right. And they're like, what you talking about? You ask your mother, mom, don't you see this? Look, honey, I don't see nothing. You ask your husband, look, do you see what I see? I don't see it. Yeah. Until the Lord deal with him and her. Right. And open their eyes. That's it. 
Hallelujah. That they may see. That's right. They will be blind all their life. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. The one thing I know of truth, when you're sincere yeah. and honest oh, yeah. and want to be right, Glory to God of heaven will open your eyes. That's right. And let you see the real thing. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's right. The Bible says to make all men see. All men. What is the fellowship of the mystery that was hid in God that created everything by Jesus Christ? Enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. Uh oh. Wide is the gate. And broad is the way. Broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. That lead to hell. That's and what that means. And many there be. How many? Many there be. How many? Many there be. Where are you going? Which go in thereat. Because, because, what, what, why they chose that broad way? Because straight is the gate. Oh, straight is the gate. And narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto life. How many find that? And few there be that find it. Now, few. you know, when we was little in elementary school and middle school and high school, we all took gym. You that mm -hmm. had it. Well, there was some time the gym teacher tried to, train, tried to train you to walk on the balance beam. That's right. When you walk on the balance beam, it's not like walking on the floor. <laughs> you have to take your time. That's right. Try to balance yourself until you master the balance beam. Yeah. Then you're able to move more freely. That's right. The churches today, God's way, I liken that to the balance beam. Oh, yeah. Because you have to walk very careful. Very careful. You have to let the Lord order your steps. Your steps. Thank God a good man step is order. ordered by, by, the Lord, Lord. by the Lord. And he direct your path. That's right. But when you're walking on the floor of the gym, you can jump around and flip over and shoot the hoop. That's the way you do in the false churches. That's right. Amen. Everything is loose. Oh, yeah. No discipline teaching. You got women for pastors. Amen. You got women for bishops. Right. You got women for elders. That's right. And then these old liars come tell you God can use a woman like he can use a man. There ain't no Bible tell you that lie. No. And then they go to Joel, the book of Joel. Joel. I believe uh, 228, you better read that. Yes. Because I want to put the eight ball in the corner pocket in case I got any Oklahoma women preachers here. That's right. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. You know, there's a lot of cowboys in Oklahoma. That's right. And, and we, we, we got our rope right that now. Rope. That's right. Huh? That's right. And I want to lasso. Round them up. I, I want to lasso me a woman preacher. That's you right. know, she, she's out there wild and fucking. <laughs> She's out there wild. That's right. She's out there wild and bucking. Amen. And I see that woman preacher screaming. I, I get on my Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, take God. And I, I throw Bible. I throw Bible. Bible on it. That's right. When I throw Bible on it, I tie your hands <laughs> and tie your feet and tell her, now you can't preach no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want the world to know that she's caught, so I brand her with Bible. <laughs> and she cry out, oh no! <laughs> Hallelujah. The God of heaven Hallelujah. have never Call a woman and never, preach the gospel. Never, never did. I want you United Pentecostal hypocrites. That's right. And you P-A-W fakers. Yeah. And you church of God in Christ and assemblies of God that's flooded with women preachers. Oh, yes. This is the scripture they use to justify them. Joel chapter 2 and at verse 28. I'm going to show you how dumb the bishops are and they can't even interpret the Bible. That's right. Hear me, hear me, preachers, hear me, preachers. I know you're upset over internet, and it doesn't matter. I'm a lasso your lasso. wife. That's right. 
I'm going to lasso your mama. That's right. And I'm going to lasso her with Bible. That's right. All right. Joel chapter 2 and at verse 28. What is it? And it shall come to pass afterward. Afterward. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your, your daughters, sons and daughters, shall, daughters prophesy. shall prophesy. Your old men shall your dream old dreams. Men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the upon servants, servants and, and upon the handmaids in those days. In those days. Will I pour out my spirit. Every woman preaches church say this scripture is a foretelling that gives women the permission to preach. Right. And many of you have heard it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. This scripture was fulfilled mm -hmm. in the second chapter of Acts. Of Acts. When they received the Holy Ghost. That's right. I want all you viewers to get this. That's right. Show this to your mama. Amen. And show this to your pastor's wife That's who right. looked like Jezebel's daughter. That's right. No Hallelujah. cut necks and mini skirts and splits all in your coat, your clothes and red fingernails and red toenails and earrings and CVS and Walgreen hair. That's right. Fake eyelashes and ankle chains on you and you claim you a Christian looking like a regular neighborhood whore. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Are you listening? Amen. What is that? Still in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. What is it? And that? it shall come to pass afterward. It shall come to pass afterward. That I will pour out my I spirit will pour upon, out all my flesh, spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. If there's any woman preachers here, I'm putting you in for early retirement. <laughs> That's right. This scripture going to retire you. Oh, yes. If your bishop told you this scripture gave you permission to preach, all bishops of the Church of God in Christ, Assemblies of God, United Pentecostal, PAW, every last one of you are liars. liars. And not one of you can stand behind that stuff with Bible. Not one. That's right. Not one. That's right. It'll be good now. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out will my, pull spirit out my spirit upon all, upon all flesh. And your sons and your, your daughters, sons and daughters shall, prophesy. shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream your dreams. Your old men shall dream your dreams. Your young men shall, young see, men visions. shall see visions. And also upon the also servants upon and upon the, the handmaids, handmaids in, those days in those days will I pour out my spirit. Now let's read where this was fulfilled. Go to the second chapter of Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 2. Begin at verse 16 because this is when Holy uh, Pentecost fell. That's right. The Bible said in the beginning at verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all it was all with one accord in one place, and suddenly came a sound from heaven. As of a rush of mighty, mighty wind, and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared and they unto them cloven tongues. And like as fire, and, and set upon each of them. And they were and all filled, filled with, the, filled with Holy the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues, the Spirit of God to give utterance. Gave them utterance. Now here's the people thought they were drunk. For these are not drunk in yeah. suppose. They thought they was drunk because right. the Holy Ghost fell. And the people standing around, they thought they was drunk. That's right. And now the Holy Ghost began to speak through Apostle Peter. That's right. To get everybody straight on what was going on. Acts Remember, Joel brought the prophecy by the Spirit. And now Peter going to open up and explain the fulfillment of the prophecy by the same spirit that was in Joel. Acts chapter 2 and verse 16. Follow me. But this is that. What? This is that. What? This is that. What? This is that. This is that. Which was spoken by the prophet that Joel. That was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass it in the last day, saith God, last day, say I will go out of my spirit. I will pull out my spirit. Upon all flesh. All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. No, they're going to preach. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. No, the bishop going to ordain them the bishop. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. No, the bishop going to do like T.D. Jakes, turn the whole church over to his daughter. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. No, the bishop going to be like the bishop of the church of God of Christ, him and his wife is going to preach. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. All churches that got women preachers are liars and fake churches. That's right. They are fake churches. That's right. They are fake churches. Amen. That goes for Oklahoma. If any one of you go to a church where the woman preach, even if it's your wife, oh. you in a fake church. That's right. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. And this is plain. This is that. This is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. That Joel told us about. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God. Say of God. I will pour I will out pull my out spirit, the spirit upon all flesh, flesh. And your sons, your sons and your daughters, and your daughters shall, prophesy. shall prophesy. And your young, young men shall see visions. Shall see visions. And your old men and shall dream old dreams. Men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and, and on, on my, my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. 
spirit. I will pour out in those days my spirit. And they shall prophesy. They shall preach. They shall prophesy. They shall be bishops. They shall prophesy. Some of you fake churches say, well, we don't ordain. We don't believe women should be pastors. But in Pastor Jennings, we don't let them in the pulpit, but we let them give their sermon on the floor. You can go to hell from the floor like you could <laughs> from the pulpit. That's right. I don't care what position they are. That's right. If the Bible is right, everybody else is wrong. That's right. Come on back to Bible. Amen. Come on back Come on to back. Bible. That's right. Go Hallelujah. Back to Timothy, son. Back in 2 Timothy chapter Go three. back to Timothy now. Follow me in your Bible. Back in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. All right, let's go back to the foundation of the message. All scripture, All scripture is given, given by inspiration of by God. By the inspiration of God. And it's profitable. Now you're a prophet when you have the scripture, when you got what? For doctrine. Now your doctrine got to come from the scripture. That's right. All of your doctrine, all, all of your belief, all of your practice, That's all right. of your wish up got to be centered around the scriptures like the planets orbit around the sun. That's right. If you're going to have women deacons, go to the Bible, to the Bible. and show me one woman deacon in the Bible. Yeah. If you're going to have uh, junior bishops and junior elders and junior pastors, go to the Bible. That's right. I can't even find a junior liar. <laughs> That's right. You're just a liar. That's right. That's right. If you're going to have so-called praise dancers in the pulpit and turn your pulpit to the Apollo Theater and they ain't doing nothing but dancing to music, go to the Bible. Yes. When I see them dancing in the Bible, they're holy dancing, holy dancing. and they're in the spirit. That's right. That's right. Huh? All scripture. I ain't never seen nobody had to pay money to give a preacher to go see him. No. You don't have to pay no money to come see me. No, no. I'll kill you free of charge. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Did you not know paying a preacher is a sin? It's a sin. You didn't know that? Amen. If you pay a people, a preacher to preach, you sinning. You're sinning. Let's get some Bible here. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Hear me, churches, hear me, churches. Let your pastor go get a job Hallelujah. and go to work at the neighborhood laundromat. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And if you pay your preacher to preach, Amen. you're sinning. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 18. I want to shake you up, you Oklahoma believers. Oh, yes. You Oklahoma churchgoers. That's right. After this, they're going to leave their church and go to the wilderness <laughs> of Oklahoma. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Just go to the wilderness. That's right. Eh? Amen. Come on, son. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 18. You know I love this thing. I was pretty tired when I got up here, but I yes, feel good now. Amen. 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 Give chapter and verse again. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 18. All right. What is my reward then? You see, we're giving you scripture because oh, yeah. the Bible said all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. for doctrine. See, you, you, your, your doctrine got to come from the scripture so you can profit by it. That's right. That's why I got to go to the scripture for everything, for the profitableness right. and the development of the church, which is the people of God. That's right. If I'm not going to preach what the scriptures, you don't need me up here. No. No. You don't need me up here. Oh, no. Hear me good, hear me good, you old pulpit thieves. First Corinthians 9 and verse 18. The preachers don't like this. Oh, I'm no. telling them they got to get a job and go to work. Go get a job and go to work. Go work for Amazon <laughs> or for FedEx. <laughs> hey, man, I work. That's I'm right. a working preacher. That's right. Yes, I do. The church don't pay me to preach no gospel at all. No. The church don't pay me a penny oh, no. to preach the gospel. We preach free. That's right. Are you listening? First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 18. Listen at this. What is my reward then? Listen at this. Give chapter and verse again. I don't want nobody to miss it. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 18. All right, William. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel. Verily. When I truly, preach the gospel. When I preach the gospel. I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. That I abuse, that I abuse not, not my power in the gospel. When a preacher charge you money to preach, he's abusing the whole congregation. That's right. 
Will you see a $5,000 prayer line, a $10,000 prayer line, a $50,000 prayer line? He's abusing you. That's right. He's abusing you. I abuse. He's abusing you. Amen. That's right. You've got an abusive preacher. That's right. An abusive pastor. That's right. Don't give that a hypocrite. I don't care if your husband. Don't give him a dime. <laughs> Amen. 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 What is my reward then? What? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. First Corinthians 9 and verse 18. What is my reward then? You see why then? they hate this preaching? Oh, they hate it. Amen. We do like Jesus. Come turning all the tables over. <laughs> That's right. So we thank God we come along and turn over everybody's religion and everybody believes in saying everything is wrong but God. That's right. Huh? That's right. People get mad. You think you're the only one right. No, I don't. I believe that God is the only one right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stick to the inspired thing that God brought. That's right. Jesus is not coming back for nobody organization. No. Jesus ain't coming back for no organization. No. He's coming back for the same thing he left here. That's right. He's building one church and he's coming for that one church. That's right. Hear me good. First Corinthians 9 and verse 18. Come on, William. What is my reward then? What is? My reward my then. My reward then. Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. Imagine me hmm. charging you $50 to come in here. Yeah. Hundred dollars to come here. Right. A thousand dollars to come here. That's right. <laughs> One brother said, I wouldn't go. <laughs> I don't blame you. Stay home. Stay home. Hey Amen. Don't you know you got to pay money to see these preachers? Yeah. When they come in your town, you got to pay money to see them. That's right. Pay money to sit next to them. That's you right. even got to pay a few dollars for prayer. Amen. Imagine a prayer line. That costs twenty-five dollars per person. My lord, you mean to tell me a person need the Lord and you got to pay? I don't want no God where I got to have money to reach Him. No, I need God if I ain't got to die. That's right. Yeah. Huh? That's right. All right, go back to Timothy. Back Everybody, all right tonight? Yeah. Glory to God. What did He say, son? Back in Second don't Timothy. Don't you go to your church tomorrow? <laughs> Amen. Don't you step in your false church ever again. Ever again. Come out of these false churches. That's right. You're being lied to. You're being bamboozled. You're being robbed. Yeah. You're being played with. Oh, yeah. And the preacher don't fear God enough to tell you the truth because he's in love too much with money. That's and right. the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Of all evil. Any time a man can stand in front of you for hours, the Lord just spoke to me and said, there's $200,000 in the house. Yeah. Then he act like the Lord is talking to him. Huh? Huh? What, what'd you say, Lord? <laughs> That's right. What, what'd you say, Lord? That's right. Then he go off in some tongue. Halala shata, halababa, Peter, pike and pick and pepper. <laughs> Super califragilistic, espialidocious. The Lord told me to tell you, if you give $50,000 more, he'll give you a triple, couple, cup of, cup of blessing. Who will be the first one? And you got innocent, dumb people. Oh, yeah. Even the homosexuals walking up. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Then he act like he's in some spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> That's the devil. That's right. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give these false prophets a dime. Oh, no. If you got to pay to see any preacher, he's a liar. Amen. Amen. Don't give him a dime. Don't give him a dime. You got to pay for a miracle? <laughs> My Lord. Your miracle costs $100? <laughs> That's Lord. a miracle ain't worth having. Amen. Amen. Jesus came here free. Oh, yes. He died for us free. Free. He suffered free. That's right. Went on down to the grave and stayed there three days and three nights. No one had to give him a dime to come back. No. He said, I am the resurrection. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's right.
these things out here, you might as well close down these churches. Oh, yeah. Boycott the churches. Yeah. You that are listening, boycott these money stealing churches. That's right. Boycott them. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. These preachers won't change because you won't change. Yeah. You make them rich. Oh, yeah. You buy them his house. You buy him his car. Yeah. You buy him his yacht. God ain't never spoke to no preacher living and said, you got to have a plane. You want a plane? Get a job and go to work and buy it yourself. Hallelujah. Wonderful. You Wonderful. blind church goers. Wonderful. You so easily to be calm. Yeah. If I want a plane, let me get a job and go to work. That's right. And buy it myself. I don't want no private jet. No. Not with what I'm preaching. <laughs> no. Devil may get in the one that's flying. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. That's right. Are you listening? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, William. Back in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen at this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. For all of my doctrine got to come from the word of God. It must be lined up with the scripture. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Mm -hmm. It must lock down stock and barrel with Bible. For reproof. Now the word of God come and re reprove us. Oh yeah. Now this shows me how thick a person's skin is if I use that term. Because yeah. sometimes we may think we're doing our best and doing all we can, but then the Bible may come along and shed light and say what you've done is not good enough or you didn't do it right. That's right. There's no need to get mad. No. I remember I had to reprove a brother uh, in, in Maryland one time years ago in the state of Maryland. Man, I, he done something. He made a mess and I laid him out. Mm. I really had to lay him out. He got so upset with me. He got off the auxiliary and all that. I didn't say nothing. Then uh, I was somewhere else preaching and he came there and shook my hand. He said, he said, you know, brother, you really upset me the other day. You really tied into me. I, I thought I was doing my best. Yeah. He said, but uh, when you brought the scripture that uh, the Lord says that all things must be done decent and in order. He said, you know, you can read about reproof, but when you want a saint, when you want the receiving end of reproof, you don't feel good. That's right. He said, but... Uh, Hey, you're not going to get rid of me that quick. Amen. I said, I'm not, I didn't correct you or reprove you to get rid of you. Wonderful. I reprove you to show you that you need to look deeper into what you're doing. Yeah. And when you're humble, you will say, you will look and examine what you've done. And if you're humble and got the right spirit, you'll say, you know what? Yeah, I could have done better. That's right. I could have handled that matter better than that. Or I could have went further and reached out and uh, add more substance to that. And you got to use good judgment on yourself. If you think you're going to serve God without biblical reproof, the you're proof. sadly mistaken. That's right. You better give me the book of Hebrews, Hebrews. the Bible. Listen at this. Hebrews chapter 12 and we'll start at verse 5. All right. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which have speaketh forgotten unto you. The exhortation which given unto you. As unto children. As unto children. My son. My son. Just Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. You know, anytime you despise being reproved, you're going to be lost. That's right. Well, I don't care who you are, where you come from, or the position you hold, or what you were doing. Oh, yeah. Amen. When God tell you a thing got to be done a certain way, you got to do it that way. That's right. Now, if I'm wise, I'm going to humble myself and evaluate what I've done and see, well, you know, I, I could have done better. Yeah. I could have done this a little bit more. I could have done this a little bit more. I shouldn't have said this or I overreacted. No, I, 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 let me humble myself That's to the right. reproving of the scriptures. That's right. And my son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Word of God is reproving the world now. Oh, yeah. Amen. Reproving these three gods and Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and baptism and all that foolishness. You're being reproved. That's all right. these man made religions. The Bible is reproving it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Nor faint. When thou art rebuked, when thou of, art him. rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Wait a minute. Wait. Amen. You mean to tell me you're going to serve the Lord? You, listen, you like living home. Yeah. You live home and you never get a beating? Never. Hmm. When I was coming up, uh, we knew what the belt was. That's right. It's not like these homes today where there's a bunch of strangers in the house. No. When I came up, I came in a home of discipline and respect yeah. and order. There was order to how things should be done. Right. 
Amen. And my father laid rules, my mother laid rules. My job was to take out the trash. My father was so clean, I had to take the trash out and then I had to wash the trash cans out. Amen. He, 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 my father said, a trash can shouldn't smell like trash. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So when I took the trash out, I had to put comic in there and scrub it, wash it. And it didn't matter. I sometimes I hypocrite and go to bed early. And then act like I sleep, sleep. And my father come home. You, Jane, uh, <laughs> I like I'm sleeping. So Jane, he said, all right, if I work three jobs, get out that bed. <laughs> it didn't matter to him. It was 12 midnight. That's right. He left rules That's right. for me to obey. Many times I hypocritically went to bed early, faking like I was asleep. But when the great judge came <laughs> and got me out that bed, I don't care if it was 11 or 12 midnight and I had school the next day. Yeah. I had to get up, get my clothes on, carry the trash out, sprinkle comic in that trash can, wash it out, then go to bed. <laughs> My father would tell me, well, if I tell you to do a thing, I mean to do that. Right. Now here come Jesus said, exact no more, no more in that which than is what's the point of you. And when you do less than what is required, then reproof going to come. That's right. Huh? For whom and, the Lord. And, and when you don't have thick skin, and that's what reproof will do. Yeah. It'll manifest whether that's really your brother or your sister, yeah. whether they're really with you or they're not with you. That's right. Oh, it'll manifest. That's the right. Bible says what? For whom the Lord loveth, the Lord chases, loveth he chases, and scourges and every, son every son whom he receives. Whom he receives. If he endure chastening, if he endure, if he endure chastening, God, God dealeth deal with, with you, as, you with sons. as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? What son is he? Who are you hmm. that the Lord won't chase? But if ye be without chastisement, all right, yeah, they they often tease me and get on me over the air, yeah. over the internet about calling names. Right. I, I get Bible for calling names. <laughs> That's right. Now I want to show you what the Lord think of you. Hebrews chapter. Of everybody who think they will escape chastisement and rebuke. This is what the Lord think of you. He, Amen. This is from the Lord himself, not from <laughs> Pastor Jenna. That's right. Amen. Listen at this. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 8. Yeah. But if ye be without chastisement. Now I want everybody to hear this. I want to say it very nice and very calm. Nice. I want everybody to know that I'm not calling you these things. <laughs> this is from the Bible. From here. the Bible. If, if ye be without chastisement, without chastisement, whereof all, if ye be without rebuke, mm -hmm. if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, all, sometime in our life, we're going to get laid out. That's right. If we don't get laid out, who did the Lord say we are? What did he say we are? Then are you bastards. We're what? Bastards. We're what? Bastards. And what? And not sons. But I'm speaking in tongue. Bastards. A preacher. Bastards. Choir director. Bastards. On an instrument. Bastards. A preacher. Bastards. A reader. Bastards. <laughs> A deacon. Bastards. You, you, you I'm got me with that one, pal. <laughs> I'm on a security team. Bastards. The mother of the church. Bastards. Your daughter. Bastards. Your mama. Bastards. Your husband. Bastards. Who you sleeping with? Bastards. Then are ye bastards and not sons. Amen. Amen. Do you hear that? That's, That's what right. the Lord think of you. <laughs> That's right. When you can't take chastisement, mm -hmm. then are ye bastards. When you can't take it, then are you bastards. When you, you get upset from it, don't want it. Then are you bastards and not sons. That's right. You got to believe that scripture just like you got to believe Genesis 1-1. That's right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's right. But, eh? but if ye be without chastisement, if ye be without chastisement, if ye be without rebuke, wherein all are partakers, then are ye bastards, you're just a bastard, and not sons. And that's what's out here now: a bunch of church going, shouting, speaking in tongue, roll wearing Cadillac driving bastards, <laughs> bastards. Eh? That's right. All right, go back to Timothy. <laughs> back in Second Timothy, chapter three and Is verse. That all right, 16. Oklahoma? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want this to be good for you that are watching that are upset now. Oh, yeah. You can be upset as you want. If you're not a bastard, you ain't got no reason to be angry. That's right. Only bastards will get upset with this. That's right. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, make good. Yeah, make good. Yeah, make good. Back I want to roast you like chestnuts on an open fire. <laughs> Amen. Come on, son. Back in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All right, Oklahoma, get this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. All right, the Bible comes to reprove us because we're out of line. That's right. It's like needing a will alignment. You know, when you need a wheel alignment, your steering wheel, you can tell it start pivoting to the left or to the right. That's right. So the script has come to reprove us, to correct us, to give us a spiritual alignment. That's right. And then we have to evaluate ourselves to see and know that we could have done better than what we have done. Don't get upset with the preacher. No. Don't get upset with the preacher. He's no. just telling you what you should have done. That's right. Until the Lord even told Paul, it shall be told thee yeah. what thou oughtest to do. Oughtest to do. All right, son. For correction. Now, the whole world need correction. Oh, yeah. If I get out of line, you think the Bible won't correct me? Hmm. That word corrects me. That's right. Amen. When the Bible, the God will make me preach something that will slap me right in my face. That's right. Amen. Turn that double barrel gun right on my face. I can't dodge the bullet. No. William read something that's hitting me. I can't tell him to turn the pages. <laughs> that's right. Huh? That's right. Turn, turn, turn the pages, William. Amen. Don't read now. No, no, no. Thank God I got to step up to the plate because I want to be saved. That's it. And let the Bible unload on me. That's right. For correction. Do you hear this? For correction. For correction. Now, this is what the churches need. Oh, yeah. This wish up that the wish up in the churches have gone wrong. That's right. This religious junk that's gone on in the churches, and they got the nerve to call it church. Church. I forgot the name of this hypocrite and bishop, a man who's just a low life to the very office of a bishop, mm. who was bragging about when New Year's came here. He turned his whole church to a club. My Lord, my Lord. A man had a disco light in there, mm. and everybody all dancing. <clears throat> my Lord, my Lord. All oh, club. Club sinners can come up. The sinner can come on in there right, right with it. Yeah. Hey, hey sinners say, oh yeah. Now, <laughs> this right. is what church should be. That's right. I can still be the devil. Yeah. That's right. Jesus, who is God manifested in the flesh, yeah. said, My house shall be called house a house of prayer for all people. For all people, you should not be able to go in the church and see the behavior of a club. No. no. Are you listening? Amen. Don't Amen. go in no church. The moment you see it, the behavior of a club, get out. Get out. Don't sit there and complain. Get out. That's right. The Bible says I had some people get on social media. Who are you to tell people to leave the churches? Leave Give the me church. the book of Corinthians. Second Corinthians will. chapter 6. And at verse 17. I, I got to have scripture for doctrine. That's right. I'm going to give you this, viewers, and you that are here, mm -hmm. why you should leave your churches because the Bible said so. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. What? Wherefore, come out from among them. Wherefore, go in among them. Come out from among them. Go in among them. Come out from among them. And do what? And be ye separate. Who said it? Saith the Lord. Saith Geno Genesis. Saith the Lord. Saith Geno Genesis. Saith the Lord. Saith Geno Genesis. Saith the Lord and what and touch not the unclean thing and what and I will receive you I want God to receive me that's right man you listen I don't care if people don't receive me no that doesn't matter to me if people don't even like me that's right I'm not traveling all over the world searching for love <laughs> that's, huh? in all the wrong places oh, pastor. God. <laughs> are you listening that's right <laughs> Do you that's really right. think I came all the way to Oklahoma Looking for love? Looking for love. <laughs> I ain't looking for your love. I'm looking for your soul. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm looking for. Amen. Amen. See, these preachers, they need the love of the people. Yeah. This is why they're scared to preach anything that offend them, and they're glad when celebrities come to their churches. Like the churches, that's a very, like the Church of God in Christ. Celebrities are very, they, they flock to the Church of God in Christ because celebrities know 
no sin gonna be spoken against. That's right. They can come there living together, not married. The pulpit ain't gonna say nothing. No. They can come there with their second, third, and fourth wife. The bishops are not going to say nothing. No. They can come there high as a kite and smoke off reefer. The bishop may say, is it for municipal purpose? Yeah, all right, you all right there. You all right. That's true. Right. That's right. Why you think is hardly no church? The churches are settled on flying rainbow flags. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Are afraid to step on the toes of the world. That's right. I'm not gonna step on your toe, I'm gonna amputate your legs. That's right. That's right. We're making a recall Amen. to the world. Oh, yeah. Come back to Bible. Oh yes. Or stop going to church. That's right. That's right. You ain't gonna do it the way the word of God said do it. Stay home and die and go to hell. That's right. Don't play church. No. The word of God say God is not mocked. No. Yeah. That's why some sinners won't go to church today because even they tell you, man, they playing church. Yeah. They ain't going to no church. They playing church. That's right. And sinners mistakenly categorize all churches the same yeah. until they run up on this program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah. don't care how high he is. I don't care how drunk he is. He know. This is not like what he been used to hearing or seeing. That's right. That's right. See, what he been used to seeing is. This right here. Amen. Amen. Totally different. Totally different. Are you listening? Oh yes. We have celebrities come here. I don't give you no special seat. No. NBA players, NFL players, and hockey players, and all that multi-millionaires. Listen, I wouldn't care if you own half of the kingdom. <laughs> That's right. When you walk in here, you dust like I am. Oh, yes. You born of a woman like I am. That's right. I don't look up to you. I look up to heaven. That's right. That's right. Huh? Amen. Don't care what you drive. Don't care how much money you have. Don't care how large or how small your house is. When you die, you can't take one dime with you. Right. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? That's right. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. Correction. For instruction oh, in righteousness. Hold it. Instruction in how? In righteousness. So now the Bible is left here for our learning to instruct us the right way. That's right. Instruction and righteousness. In tell, righteousness. Us, tell us how to do a thing right. Don't get offended. That's right. Don't get mad. Yeah. Don't get upset. Yeah. No. Yeah. Your, your, your flesh is too shallow. You got to be able to take it. If you've done a thing wrong, then do it right. That's it. The Bible speaks plain For here. instruction, instruction in, in righteousness. righteousness. That's right. That's right. If you believe you're a woman preacher and you hear the right way, then you correct. Don't right. step in the pulpit ever again. That's right. Ever again. Don't let your daddy put you up there. Don't let your husband put you up there. N n never again. Never again. You living together, not married. Don't live with him no more. That's right. Well, Pastor Dennis, he been promising to marry five years. Why won't he do it? Because you keep giving them good and plenties out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Ain't no man, you're not even giving him a reason to marry you. No. Amen. <laughs> he come in the door, he just yell, all aboard! Oh, and there's the train, open for service. There's the train. <laughs> Am I right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Close down your train station. That's it. Pack up your baggage department. That's right. Uh-huh. For instruction in righteousness. <laughs> You hear the old troublemaker. Oh, yeah. Let me take you young girls back to old school. It's not a sin being a virgin. No. Not a sin being a virgin. Don't think you've done something big. That's right. Because you slept with I don't know how many men in your neighborhood. That's right. There's no monopoly on it. Dogs run with dogs. Roaches got little roaches. Yeah. Get knocked up is common. Close your legs. That's it. And close your mouth. 
That's right. Go ahead, man. Let the church say. Let the church say. Let the church say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's enough of that. That's enough. Hallelujah. Some of you young girls ain't got no mama to tell you nothing. Yeah. And some of you young girls ain't got no daddy to tell you nothing because your daddy is knocking you up himself. My Lord, my Lord. You ain't got no preacher to tell you nothing because he wants to know your leg size. That's right. Preacher. Close your legs. That's it. Get off your knees. Go ahead. Man. You ain't praying. <laughs> That's right. No. Go ahead, bro. You young men, Lord made you more than a woman for you. That's right. Stop sitting on your pastor's lap. That's right. Don't be like that man dressed like a cop dancing for C.D. Jakes. That's right. <laughs> and Jake's just looking at him. He ain't tell that artificial cop you loose. Amen. Amen. Big deal because a bunch of men compliment your body shape. What does it mean you 15 years old and you're dating someone 35? That's right. You think he love you. He love your meat. That's all you got to give him is nothing but meat from your seat. That's right. And then when he done with you, he toss you aside and pick up the next, next one in the neighborhood. Yeah. Go ahead, man. I hate to say this about us, Go ahead. but our young girls is getting pregnant more and more and no marriage. No. Your mother, your mother, who is your child's grandmother, she's raising the child. Yeah. She got to take it to the doctors for all appointments. She got to go to all the schools while you out there shaking your behind partying. That's right. And now you get knocked up by Fred. You get knocked up by Bill. You get knocked up by Phil. You get knocked up by the fireman, the policeman. Yeah. Amen. It's time to shut your store down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It used to be a candy commercial when I was a kid. Good and plenty. And that's the way she go to Mr. Charlie. Because Charlie says, love my good and plenty. Charlie says, and when he see you, really ring the bell. That's right. Charlie says. Go ahead, Pastor. You can't say no to Charlie because he fish you. you. He use money for bait, young girl. Yeah. He buy you a little scarf. He buy you a little fake Gucci bag that he got from the Chinese stand. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Buy you some little shorts because he want to see your meat hanging out of it. Yeah. Buy you a little halter and tell you to profile for him. That's right. Sit you in the front seat of his Bentley and drive you around like he drive a pet. You parents, it, bro. put some order in your house. Go ahead. Go ahead. Many of your houses is just as wild as the devil himself. Oh, yeah. You fathers are out here smoking and drunk. Your mothers are out here smoking and drunk. How in the world you expect your children to be right? That's right. Go ahead. They bro. got their first shot of liquor from your refrigerator. Yeah. They learn how to curse because you curse them out. Oh, yeah. You young girls, close your legs. That's it. This, this is you. I know many of you may be offended at this preaching, but you here tonight. <laughs> now, we're going to go to school tonight.
This is the woman when she's respectable, conduct herself. You don't even show your teeth at a man that whistle at you. When a man bump his horn, you should be too good to turn around to him. That's right. Do you hear me? When a man, you bump your horn at dogs. You ain't no dog. So when a man bump his horn, you should think of yourself as too good, too good. to turn around. When he says, oh, you too good to look at me? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. It ain't no shame. Wonderful. But when you act like your neighborhood food market, imagine these are your legs. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. And this is the way you are now. Here come the police. Here come your next door neighbor. Here come the deacon. My Lord. Here come the assistant pastor. Here come your uncle. Here come your blood brother. My Lord, my Lord. Am I right tonight? Amen. Amen. You young boys, young men, it's no sin if you're a 15 or 20 or 25 or 30 or 35 year old virgin. That's right. That ain't no sin. That's right. What have you proved? Because you haven't had sex yet. Sex don't make you a man. No. What good is being a 17-year-old young boy who's an irresponsible father? Yes. And you can't take care of the child at all. You can't even afford a roll of toilet paper. Hallelujah. You girls, close your legs. Hallelujah. What should you do, women? Say it again. What should you do? What about if Bishop come? If your daddy come? If your brother come? If your boyfriend come? Hallelujah. You man? your draws. Hallelujah. If you think I'm from the hood, I'm a, I, I come from the hood, Jack, and we mixed it up thoroughly. We was not walking around with our pants hanging down showing our draws. So you men who want your pants hanging down showing your underwear like you're a male hoe. Cause that's what you look like. If you didn't know it, I'm telling you. You look like a male whore that's making a regular neighborhood booty call because a real man don't advertise his butt. Yeah. Am I right, man? Yeah. I mean, come on now. Imagine if Pastor Jennings would have came here. And I would have came in the pulpit mm. with my pants hanging down, mm. a belt tied down, and I'm walking in here. <laughs> See, when the Lord said, let us make man, being made in the image of God is not just having a shape, form, and fashion but it's having the characteristics of God. That's right. Being a man just in shape is not enough. Man 
who have the characteristics of God not in his life, he's not a man. You men, you look out in the street, you want to wear skin tight pants. You want to wear your hair long like a woman. Like a woman. Someone said, what about Samson? When Delilah was done with him, oh, he, he had a haircut. A haircut. Our strength is not in our hair now. No. Our strength is, is in the way we live. Yeah. For the book teaches us it's a shame for a man to have long oh, hair. Yeah. You want to wear your wife's bobby pins. You want to wear a man bun. Hmm. A man bun. You want to put your hair in the same bun like your wife. My Lord. So Satan is working overtime to make, take away the masculinity from the man and take away the femininity from the woman. And the devil is switching places with him. It's hard to find a feminine woman today. A lot of women you see walking down the street, hey, yo, what's up? When you see the men, hey, yo, Joseph, uh, can I see you a minute? Okay. Everything is switched up. Even the bishop is walking like this. That's right. The choirs is all like this. Are you listening? So this is how bad church become. Satan have infiltrated what's supposed to be church and he's dismantling it. Oh yes. One by one, because the spirit that is in these churches is not divinely inspired like the book. The preachers are preaching on their own will, yeah. on their own accord. The book said all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God that's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, reproof, for correction, correction, for instruction, instruction in, righteousness, in righteousness, that the man that of the God, man God, of may, God be perfect, may be perfect, complete, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I'm determined to do this thing right. That's it. All good work, all I'm good determined. Works that the truth of God do it right. Amen. Some say I'm too hard. Some say I'm too strict. Well, if you're going to be a good soldier and this is an army, amen, anyone that here that ever been in the military, I don't think, in fact, I'm sure that uh, you didn't put on ballerina shoes in boot camp. Hmm. That sergeant laid it to you. You can't tell them, whoever well, I want. <laughs> you got to take it. That's right. The word of God is for correction. Correction. The word of the Lord is for reproof. Yeah. Just like this fake salvation here, bowing head and raising hands and accepting Christ as your personal Savior and joining church and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptism and all that prayer, sinner's prayer and all that rubbish that come out of hell. Amen. Well, the Bible is here to correct that. That's be right. born again like what Jesus told Nicodemus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter through the kingdom of God. When you're born of the waters, when you've repented of your sins, this is what the Lord wants you to do. Repent first. Repent. Not just jump up and be baptized. The Lord wants you to repent. Repent. He wants you to be sorry about your sins. After you repent, because you are convicted, in your heart from the word of the Lord that was preached. And you know you need to change. Oh yeah. I know some things I say may not settle with you too good, but you'll get over it. <laughs> you don't get over it now, you'll get over it later. Oh yes. Repent, then, Oklahoma. That's right. That's right. If you're a preacher here, repent. You repent. I don't care if you're a preacher, if you got your collar on backward, what do I care? <laughs> Take your backward collar off or get baptized in it. That's right. Repent. Repent. Then Peter, Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. And be baptized every one of you. Yeah. You see this? This goes for the whole city. That's right. And the whole state. Oh, yeah. And you can attach the rest of the country with it. Repent. Repent. And be baptized every one no of you. No bowing head, no raising hands, no joining the church, no pray to sinner's prayer. None of that stuff is authentic salvation. If you've done it, you're not saved. That's right. 
Well, Pastor Jen, don't no, Pastor Jen is me. If you are done it, you're not saved because nobody in here in the scriptures was told to do it. The scriptures is inspired. That's right. All scriptures are given by inspiration of God. So therefore, uh, we are correcting it. We are reproving it with the book, with the book here. That's it. Uh -huh. Then Peter said unto them, repent, repent. and be baptized every one every of you one of in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins washed away in your shell. Receive the gift of the Holy when Ghost. When you have the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongue as the Spirit of God give utterance, like they were obtained on the day of Pentecost, that's when you're born of the Spirit. That's it. When you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that's when you're born of the water. Amen. You can receive the Holy Ghost before you're baptized. Oh, yes. Now, I, I, can't, I can't give you that. That gift come from heaven. Right. Until James said every good gift, every perfect gift come from above, come down from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variables, no shadow of turning. Right. All right, you heard it tonight. Oh, yes. If there's anybody here, Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma, if you want to be right tonight, and be baptized the Bible way, the right way, in the name of Jesus Christ, so you don't go to hell. Stand on your feet tonight, Oklahoma. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, glory to God, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing for baptism, go to the back. Glory to God, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. No return, God. <laughs> Amen. I told you that this is the one tornado you won't get away from. Amen. Amen. You know, one, one minister was telling me last week on the phone how the preachers are so upset at the hundreds and thousands of people going down in water. He, some preachers were saying, all them people ain't sincere. Them people are not sin today. They're just doing it because of Pastor Jennings. Yes, that's how upset the preachers are. Oh, because the Lord is not working through them at all. Amen. He's working in the truth of God plenty. 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 Except the Lord build the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, they labor in vain that build. So you can say the people are not sincere at all. You want, the people ain't paying you no mind, preachers. No, no. These people want to get themselves right. I've told you every place we go, we got to open up a church. I'm so far behind. I'm so far behind. Amen. We baptize more people by God's help in one night than most men would do if they passed at 70 years. Oh, yes. This is the Lord's doing. You got to see it's the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. Amen. So we thank God for it. Amen. You get the people ready for baptism. And how many brothers who got baptizing back there? Four? Good. You got four baptizing there. Yes. All right. We'll pray for you. Come on up. Before you get baptized, you want prayer. All right. You get sick. Oils for those that are sick. Now, the Bible says when you're afflicted, you pray. But when you're sick, then the elders required to anoint with oil and pray. But being that those that are not sickless, I can still pray. Come on. Eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ, look down upon his brother and sister, one that heard the word of God and is ready to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them, strengthen their body, give healing to their body, mind, soul, body, and spirit. 
that they may walk with the word of God and fill them with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and the spirit of God to give out of us. We thank you for them. Let your peace and mercy be not only upon them, but upon all that is on down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Give healing to our body in every manner from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, who's giving the correct time, brothers? What's that? All right, we're going to get ready to let you go. I, got, I can get out of here and get me a late dinner. <laughs> All I had was popcorn, and uh, I can't live by popcorn alone. <laughs> All right. I try to get a chance to greet as many of you as I can, but if I don't get all, get all of you, don't get upset. Hopefully, if I don't able to get everybody, I try to get the remaining on tomorrow. Let us all stand. Eternal, everlasting God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you for what you have done. We thank you for working again, pricking the hearts of the brothers and sisters that are present. Fill them with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue even before they baptize, if it be your will or after, or during the process of baptism. Let your word be made manifest. We can never thank you enough for standing behind your word with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to your own will. We thank you for giving us strength tonight. Them that are sick, give healing to their body, give them that are weak. Men that which is broken, build us up in every form and every manner. Bless the service on tomorrow. That the word of God may be preached again to prick the hearts of those who hear the word of God and is not yet baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. Stand by us and be with us till we meet again. These blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every heart say amen. amen. Really?